you're still watching ways now world autism day is an internationally recognized day on april 2nd every year encouraging member states of the united nations to take measures to raise awareness about people with autistic spectrum disorder including autism and asperger syndrome throughout the world autism is a serious developmental disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact autism spectrum disorder impacts the nervous system the range of severity of um, symptoms can vary widely. Now, common um, symptoms include difficulty with communication, difficulty with social interaction, obsessive interest, and repetitive behavior. Now, early recognition, as well as behavioral, edu uh, behavioral educational, and family therapies may reduce symptoms that support um, development um, and, and learning. So Vaughn Odukwe is a vibrant and bubbly multi-talented professional and she's very passionate about maximizing the awareness and acceptance of autistic women and men through mentorship and training. She actively participates in various charity organizations while providing a platform to educate families dealing with autism to, um, disorder to dis discover rather, develop and unleash their children and adults' full potential in life. And she's joined in the conversation live all the way from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much, Vaughn. <laughs> Everybody, nice to be here. Hi, Ways. Thank you, Vaughn. Thank you. We are, team. we are happy to have you. I mean, when um, Isi spoke to me about, um, you know, your interview, I watched it and I was blown away. I said, okay, we have people that, you know, are really, really passionate about this subject. Because a lot of times, maybe let me start with this. You know, a lot of times when the doctor diagnoses the child, you know, as being autistic, the first thing you hear parents would, most parents would do is, God forbid, they now start to take the child from one church. Please, is there any, is there any demonic uh, connotation to autism? Because everybody just feels like it is the devil that has entered somebody and there's a spirit that needs to be cast out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, the thing is, what you don't know you want to attach something to it and that is the problem for for our people at home you know the awareness is still not there it's everywhere actually you know let's not just talk about africa or nigeria uh, a lot of people do not understand it and when you don't understand something it's so easy for you to imply or to connect to the do not you know to you know to call it different things like okay it's a dynamic thing or you know you attach bad issues or bad importance to it you know and that's just what it is but you know autism like you explained in your definition is what it is and i think with more education with more knowledge you're able to navigate because if you if you look at what it is you know it's just a lack of communication, hmm. you know, and all we need is the tools to give to parents or anybody to use to navigate with their children. And that's just what it is, is as simple as that. But because mm -hmm. we don't have the knowledge, the professionals, we don't even have enough professionals that are actually trained in it, then it becomes a problem. If you take a child to a doctor, now you mentioned the word doctor and I smile, nine out of 10, I don't even, I've, I've faced in my life, I have to even tell the doctor what to do. A lot mm. of doctors don't know anything about it, you know, because it's not really like a medical problem, so to say. Mm. So when you go to the doctor, the doctor will go, well, you know, let me think about, let me consult about it. This is not something that I know of, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a very big problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I find this, um, I find this. Um, talk about autism very interesting on one hand and I'll explain mm. why because you rightly said the awareness about autism is quite low because as was yeah. said people attribute so many things to why a child is not behaving right or not yeah. having normal development or um, development um, developmental progress, progress. Yeah. thank you very much yeah. and yeah. I hear people talk about the spectrum you know, that there's a spectrum yeah. of autism. Please, can you tell us more about the spectrum? And what, what does the spectrum really measure? What is it really about? Okay, when, a when you, when, okay, when you, when, you know, when you get the diagnosis that you are autistic or you're on the autistic spectrum, 
it just means that no no two children are the same so you would find if you look at the spectrum you have people on the low side of it all the way up to those that are they use the word higher function lower function which again that's another topic for another day i question the use of labels because when you say someone is higher functioning does it mean that they are so okay that you ignore them? Mm -hmm. When you say they are lower functioning, are they so bad? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's so many problems with even what we are seeing now, even with the diagnosis, you understand? But technically, in my own words, in my own understanding from what I've been doing, the spectrum is just, you're not going to find two children the same. So if my child has autism, your child has autism, we can't sit down and compare notes. The symptoms will present different differently. Different yes, everybody's going to, you know, it all depends on your genetic makeup, obviously your environment. If one person started earlier with early intervention more than the other. Mm. So there are just various things, you know, which is where people get it wrong. You know, when they say, oh, my child has autism, but he's talking. And then another child has autism, but he's nonverbal. Mm. These are mm. other issues that also are attached to it. So you have people that don't speak. You have people that don't. But for me, the key thing in everything is all about communication, mm. you know, which comes back to this awareness we're talking about. Yeah. You so, know. so Vaughn, you have a daughter that um, is autistic. First of all, I mean, yeah. I asked you shortly before we started the show, and you said she's now 20 years old. Yeah. So I would like to, I would, yes. I would like to, I would like to hear how, the journey has been is this something that the child outgrows or the child lives with it all their life and they're able to now because they now have a clear understanding of it and they manage it better right so and the, because you mentioned something just now about early intervention does early intervention truly help when it comes to managing autism yes it does actually the sooner you know about it the better so that you can actually put things in place you know either you're putting therapies in place or even it even helps the families to be well equipped to know what they're about to deal with mm. so that you know how to let's say plan yourself you know on your everyday life now autism is not something if you have autism you have autism that's just it that's just what it is you've got that label you now need to say okay this is my child and it's specific to your child so you now need to say okay this is my child what do we know about my child you know what do they have what's you know and then you know i always tell parents always have a journal you know write down the thing because when you get to the doctor sometimes you're so overwhelmed you might forget to discuss certain things mm. so i'll give myself as an example when i started out with my daughter i was kind of like okay yeah she didn't have speech you know they said she was non-verbal so for me it was a case of okay fine she's non-verbal but then over time i now realized that most parents will say oh my god my child is not talking the speech becomes huge that they look at speech and forget about other issues mm. but for me it was like i just need to find out how to communicate with my daughter mm. and as she was growing up with all the interventions and everything we did i found that i can communicate with my daughter it doesn't necessarily have to be speech mm. you know and for me communication is key I'm not even worried about speech. If my daughter never speaks, it's not really a problem. It's the communication. Because mm. let me give you a very, um, 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 let me give you an example, just like an everyday example. If we all get on the plane, we go to Japan, you know, we don't speak Japanese. They probably don't speak English. Mm -hmm. When we get there, we need to communicate. How do we do it? We'll do it by pictures. I give you a picture. I want food or mm. I want the toilet. We will have a lovely time there because we've communicated by use of pictures mm. or sign, body language, and we will get our message across, across and get yeah. what we want. So this is exactly to the children. If we mm. put it to these children, yes, these children don't know how to communicate or have social anxieties, then we need to find a way because they are actually communicating by like when you see a child having a tantrum tantrum that yeah. tantrum in itself if you study okay. it that child is telling you something mm. but because they don't know how to express it they express it in form of a tantrum mm. now i would normally come in there and if i see a child in the first thing i'll ask the parents what happened an hour or so before that tantrum mm. and you're able to deduce what actually happened so the thing is 
if you teach parents, give them the tools to learn how to read their children and how to, you know, understand what they are doing. That's what makes it easier. It doesn't remove the autism, but mm -hmm. it makes it easier to know your child, help your child navigate. And honestly, once you do that and you move, you know, uh, with, with that child, plus all the interventions, these children end up to be autistic adults that get married and live full lives. Mm. We do have a lot of autistic families, I mean, um, uh, married that are having children and living their lives. Wow. But that's because they were given the tools and shown how to live their life. Okay, so, so we have one more. One, is not good. Okay, one more minute quickly because we just, we ran out of time quickly. Okay, so please, I just want to, I just want to touch on myths about, um, because we can't end this without talking about the myths of autism. So yes. there's one myth that I know goes around, even in movies, that people that are autistic are gifted. So they have one special ability that no one else in the world has. So a special part of their brain is well. How true is that? And can you just expand on one or two other myths? Like, so in, that like in, a, in a second. <laughs> yeah, in a second. Thank you. Every autistic child is gifted, just like every child is gifted. Mm. Some people are better, you know, like, so there's no gift, there's no myth, there's no nothing. Mm. It just happens to be that if you stumble upon a child who now shows you their strength, you know, then they say, okay, the child is gifted. There's no magic that comes in mm. autism. Who, if you see an autistic child who is gifted, maybe can draw or something, it's the same thing as what you will find with any child that is gifted. Mm. It's nothing to do with the autism. It's mm. just that that child is was opportune to show the gift that they have. Absolutely. That's just what it is. I think it's been a fantastic yes. time. But we will have to bring you back yes, because we, we need to deal to. with thank this you. conversation longer. But thank you so much oh, yeah. for taking our time to thank talk to you. us this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. All right, so we'll take thank a break you. now. When we return, we'll be talking about career opportunities. Stay with us. We'll be right back.